This video series is about using Excel VBA to create buttons for super fast data input. That's what we've been trying to do so far in the video series. We've created some buttons and positioned those buttons and we've created some nice dynamic code which will create the right amount of buttons according to the number of students in the spreadsheet. So it's all going well, but currently if I were to click on one of these buttons, nothing would actually happen. There's no macro assigned to any of these buttons. So that's what we're going to look at in uh, this video. Uh, we want to create a situation where, if we just get back into the spreadsheet now, we want to create a situation where we can click on one of these buttons and the student will be marked as not here and then we'll be able to click on the button again and the student will be marked as here. So it would just switch between here and not here. That's what we're gonna to try to do using VBA. But what are some of the potential complications, complexities here? Well, clearly we could create uh, a separate macro for each button and that will be a fairly routine operation, but that's not really what we want to be doing uh, in Excel VBA or as a computer program, programmer generally. It's not an efficient way to work to create five, 10, 15 different routines that are doing very similar things that will give us a lot of code to maintain. It's just not really an ideal situation. It would be much better, much, much better if we could create a single routine that is dynamic. So that routine would understand which button has been pressed, understand which button has been pressed, then based on that information, would find the right cell to change to here or not here. So in that sense, the routine would be dynamic. That's what we're gonna look at in this video's video series. How would we go about doing that? So you might wanna stop the video now and think, you know, how would you go about doing that yourself? That would be a good idea to stop and think about that now. Well, what's our first step? Well, elsewhere on the channel, uh, we've used a line of code, which is uh, application.caller, application.caller. I'm gonna create a new routine here. And let's call it uh, mark as here. So as always, it's a good idea to provide meaningful uh, names for the routine so you can understand what, they're do what they do just by looking at the name of the routine. So sub mark is here. And then let's say uh, active sheets dot buttons. And then this really curious, but such a really powerful line of code, which is application dot caller dot name. Let's just try this. I'm not absolutely sure if this is going to work. I'll just position the VBA editor so you can see. And let's say message box. So what is this going to do? Well, application.caller um, identifies whatever called the macro. So if, if you click on a button to call the macro, um, it should return the name of the button in this case. You might click on a shape uh, to trigger macro. In that case, it would return the name of the shape. So I'm gonna assign this macro to one of these buttons markers here. So I just right click on the button, right click on the button, assign macro, and then markers here. There we go. And then let's see what happens. And Excel is returning button two. And again, button 99. So Excel is returning the name of the button. Do that one more time. Click on the button in cell C4 here and Excel returns the name of the button. Now that's really interesting to us because these buttons, they're on different rows in the spreadsheet, but if we can get Excel to understand which row the button is on, then we should be able to get Excel to find the correct cell to change. Now, if that doesn't make sense, don't worry, I'm kind of make sense, making sense of it in my own head as I go along, but it should, it should make sense as we go through uh, the process. So I'm gonna uh, change this uh, line of code slightly, and rather than dot name, I'm gonna change this to a really useful little uh, construct, which is top left cell, and then dot address. So a good thing about VBA is it does 
look like English a lot of it so you might be able to tell just looking at that line of code you might be able to get a sense of what this is going to do so the top left cell of the button the button that called the code the address of the top left cell that's what we're looking for the address of the cell that the button is in is in layman's terms uh, what we're looking for so let's give it another go clicked on the button and we can see Excel is returning C4. That's because the button is in cell C4. So that is what we're looking for. Trying this one, Excel is returning C5. That's because the button is in C5. So now we're seeing why it was so important to be precise with the positioning of the buttons. Because we've used code to position uh, the buttons, the positioning is super precise and we're kind of reaping the benefits of that now because uh, Excel knows exactly where the buttons are and if we click through the buttons we can see that each button returns a different cell address. So that's the value of being precise earlier in the, in the code. So this seems to be uh, working well but there's something um, I'd like to fix at this point because this macro markers here that we've been working on I want that to be assigned to all of the buttons, but I don't want to have to click through all the buttons and kind of manually assign it. So let's go back to the routine that created the buttons in the first place. Could we put another line of code in here um, to assign the macro to each of the buttons when the buttons are created? Now, the line of code to do that is, let's have a look. Selection dot on action. There we go. Uh, so I'm using um, the construct selection because that's what I've used previously in, co in the code to reference the shape. Remember, the shape will be selected automatically because we've copy pasted it. Excel will select what you've pasted. So this selection line is going to hopefully select the shape. So we can say selection dot on action, and then we need these speech marks, and inside the speech marks we put the name of the macro that we want to run when the shape or when the button uh, is clicked. So which macro, macro would we want to run? Well, we've got three macros here, copy, paste, buttons, markers here, and then delete buttons. The macro we want is the one we're working on here. Just going to improve the spacing a bit there. And so we can just type in mark as here. And that means that this mark as here macro should be assigned uh, to the button when the button is created. But of course now we've got to recreate the buttons to run this code again. So I'm going to run the delete buttons code down at the bottom. Then run the, we can see all, the, all of the buttons are deleted now. Then I'm going to run uh, the first routine, copy paste buttons routine. So remember, this is the routine that creates all of the buttons, but now we've got a new line of code in here, this selection dot on action line. So let's just play this routine, see what we get. So the buttons are created fine. So now we would expect, when we click on the button, we would expect this markers here macro uh, to be triggered. So let's give that a go. Yeah, that seems all right. There we go, cell C8, cell C7, cell C6. So it seems to be working really nicely. Let's just test that or prove that. Right click on the button, go to assign macro. We can see that the name of the macro is here. And so that just proves in another way that the macro has been assigned to the button. So that line of code dot on action, really useful, this line of code here really useful for assigning macros to buttons or shapes. So this is looking good. We've got a single macro and uh, each of the buttons runs the same macro, but the beauty of the macro is it can understand where the button is and it's returning the cell address of where the button is. So we just need one more step now um, to make that alteration to the spreadsheet according to where the button is. And in layman's terms, uh, we just want this cell here, so the cell next to the button, to change from here to not here, or from not here 
So here, that's what we're looking to do. So that should be fairly routine, certainly compared to what we've been doing so far, it should be fairly routine to do that. Um, so let's work with this line of code. And we just need to improve it a little bit to, to make um, the change to the value in the cell next to the button. So how might we do that? You might want to stop the video. Um, let's say, so this, let's, let's start again. So, so this line of code is returning uh, a cell address and that cell address is where the button is. So what it would be good to use uh, this line of code, so that line of code is the cell address, and then just to offset from that, I'm going to make a bit more room so you can see on your screenshot, just to offset from that line of code by a single cell, uh, a single column uh, to the right, how will we do that? Well, if we set offset 0, 1, we'll offset 0 rows down and 1 column across. And then we can just say equals here. Let's go for lowercase. There we go. So how about that? Excel seems to seems to like that. As always with Visual Basic, don't get too caught up in the detail. It's best to try it and then it's going to be easier um, once Excel points out where the error is um, to fix it. So let's not be too timid about just trying it out. So I'm going to hit button 2 and there we go. Okay, so that seems to be working well. So what's happening there? Well, Excel is executing Excel is executing this line of code here. And this line of code finds the name of the button that triggered the macro. It then finds the address of the cell that the button is in, and then it offsets, so moves away from that cell zero rows down and one column across and in that cell it gets to it's just writing in the text here so that's how excel is working through uh, that line of code so it seems to be working well but um, ideally we want to toggle between here and not here so at the moment i can click on the button and here comes up that's great but to make it even better um, say the teacher clicked on the wrong cell, we clicked on the wrong cell, we'd want to be able to click on that button again and for the result to be reversed. So here would change to not here, not here would change to here. So how might we do that? Um, we should be able to, again, just build on this line of code and put in a conditional statement. There we go, it's just inside your screenshot. And then, put then in there, um, I'm going to, there we go. I've just um, put in the underscore there so you can see this in your screenshot, but in, in the download file, the, the, the underscore probably won't be there. And if, okay, let's try this. So we've created um, a conditional statement now, and that means we've got two possibilities here, either uh, the cell has not, has here in, or the cell has not here in, or there's a third possibility that I'm going to incorporate, it's just come to me. Um, now, in fact, let's do it with two, we only need two uh, eventualities here. Let's say, let's define our logic as if what's in the cell is here, do this, and if that's not the case, do something else. So that's the logic uh, we've defined here, you can read through it. Uh, on this line of code. So if the value in, in the cell is here, uh, then we want the value to change to not here. So how are we going to do that? Well, as usual, let's recycle code if we can. And then let's change this to not here. And then if that's not the case, we just want the reverse to happen. So again, we can recycle and change this to here. There we go. Okay, and there's, there's the whole routine. So we've just created 
a conditional statement, I'm going to indent the conditional statement. It's generally good practice to do that. And in layman's terms, uh, the first line of the code looks to see what's in the cell. If it says here in the cell, then Excel is going to, VBA is going to change it to not here. And the other eventuality, so if it doesn't say here in the cell, then Excel should get down to here and put here in the cell. A bit confusing with all the here's and not here's, but download the file, you'll be able to work through it and hopefully understand what's going on. So we should be able to go back to the buttons now and let's see what happens. We can see here changing to not here. Just test them all the way down the spreadsheet. Seems to be working well. And just to prove this, let's put a few more students in and work through the process. Let's go up to 13 students, going to go back to the Visual Basic Editor, clear out the buttons using the delete buttons macro at the bottom. So delete the buttons, the buttons should all be gone now. Then I'm going to create the buttons again. We put more students in. So if it's working, it should create some extra buttons for us. So what have we got now? We've now got uh, 13 buttons here. And let's see if this is working. Seems to be working fine. There's one thing that's getting on my nerves, which is this button to the cap the text in the button is not really helpful. It's not telling the user what's going on. So we'll fix that and we'll fix a few other things uh, in the next couple of videos. But this seems to be working pretty well. Um, I love the way if we add new students, the code is dynamic. So it's going to create more buttons for us. And the code that, that is triggered when we click the buttons is also dynamic because it can understand where uh, the button is and then make an alteration uh, to the appropriate cell according to where the button is. So that is exactly what we mean uh, by dynamic code. So this task, we're working through it, seems to be going pretty well. And the main kind of mechanics are there now. We've got the buttons there, we can click on the button and we're getting the right outcome in the spreadsheet. But there's still, there's some presentational, uh, we can certainly improve the presentational aspects here. And uh, we'd also like to know the time. So when we click on the button, we'd like the time to be recorded of when the button was clicked. So in a practical sense, we'd know when the student actually arrived in the classroom. So that's what we're gonna look in the next couple of uh, videos, improving, uh, getting that time in there and improving the presentational aspects. See you in the next video.